Hello and welcome. This is the EHF 2013 Euro live show presented by Lidl. I'm your host Rafaela Jan coming to you from our studio in Zagreb. Now last night we had the final matches from the preliminary round in groups C and D and we start off looking at group C. First up it was Germany against FYR Macedonia. German, team, team, German coach Christian Prokop made some changes to his team, bringing in Finn Lemke to stabilize the defense. Lazarov and Co. had never beaten the Germans before. Let's find out if they could change that. Oh, that's a good play. That's lovely. Everyone looking at Georgievsky, nobody seeing Kirill Lazarov ghosting in to score the Kempe. Movement of the players. It does mean that there's more room on the wings. In that instance, for Maniskov to get the ball, he didn't need it because uh, Filip Teleski scores. And then Germany comes straight back with a quick goal of their own. And somehow... They stay out of the air, that's a wonderful ball. And a great save by Ristovsky to deny Tobias Reichmann. Nice play, Maniskov. Oh, that is just magnificent from Maniskov. A little bit of basketball skills from the diminutive winger to give Macedonia a brilliant goal. Fett hits the floor. Nazarov. Oh, what a goal by Stoilov! Phenomenal. Back to the goal, doesn't stop him. Into the top corner. Macedonia will have been playing against this in training. They know what to expect. But they can't stop Pekula. Lazarov, there's room here, Stoilov, oh, what a save by Heidemetta! Amazing scenes! Confirmation of the final result, Germany 25, FYR Macedonia 25. Also in this group C, Slovenia beating Montenegro by the scoreline of 28-19. This was really goal to goal as neither team managed to dominate in the first half. The halftime score saw Slovenia favoured at 14-13. That would change in the second half as Slovenia really ran away with the score also thanks to Gaspar Magoc. At 21-16 uh, with just 16 minutes to go Slovenia st really never looked back again as they earned their biggest win in EHF Euro history and sent winless Montenegro home. Now looking at the table from this group C we have uh, FYR, FYR Macedonia with three points going into the main round. Germany take two points into the main round, Slovenia one point and as I said Montenegro are going home. Now on to Group D and this match Spain versus Denmark was really one of the most anticipated encounters of the preliminary round. These two sides would meet for a fifth consecutive time. Let's take a look at the highlights. Oh, absolute class! Brilliant goal, spun around the keeper by Hans Lindbergh, the wizard. Henrik Toft could potentially exploit. Looking for him there, Balling. Looks for the line again. Balling, oh! What a quick arm! He was falling the wrong way, it's a difficult shot to do. Oh, brilliant play, and the lob. Landin doesn't even look back, he knows exactly where it's going. So does Figueras. Lovely supply. Mensa Larsen, oh yes! Well, the connection, it was so close, it's to the millimetre, because if that had been intercepted, Spain were away on the break. Instead, Balling just got it. Problem for the uh, Spaniards at the moment is that uh, they haven't really got the uh, big long range shooter. Oh, that's beautiful. Scored one in the last game as well, and Duitschabayev teasing Landin, don't want to do that. Arinho sets him up. Passive play again, Lauga, Balling, into the line, yes! 
Lovely pass in, and Henrik Toft gets his second goal. Goal! Oh, good save! Oh! Well, how ironic. Frustration for Lindbergh, who thought he was throwing the ball back to the middle and instead handed it straight back. Into the line, superb, big gap at the back, and Renetov scores his first goal. Two of the big teams in this tournament, Hansen again! Goal number six, and Green celebrates. The final score here in Barrage in Denmark 25, Spain 22. And on to the last one of this Group D. It was the Czech Republic beating Hungary 33-27. Now, the better start for the Hungarians thanks to Mate Lekai, but they then dropped their level as the Czechs raced into the lead 15-10 just before halftime. Both goalkeepers showed great performances, but the hero of the night, that would be Onje Zahala with 14 goals scored. It was a well-deserved win for the Czechs who move on and send Hungary packing their bags to go home. So then on to the main round, Both, all three of them, Spain, Denmark and the Czech Republic are carrying two points over, whereas Hungary are dead last. Now that wraps up the preliminary action and um, I am really happy to announce our next guest. This is Sweden goalkeeper Mikael Appelgren and he's really one of the key parts of this biggest shock of the tournament. And let's take a look at his action before we welcome him to the studio couch. In the middle. Zezum saved. Ah, huge gap though. Ekberg had gone off. Well, he nearly got a second rebound there. He didn't get through the metal work. Ball stolen. Oh, we got it back again. Jezum. Oh, saved off the shoulder by Appelgren. And his good run continues. Mikhail, thank you so much for coming here to the EHF 2018 Euro mm -hmm. Live show, just to make that clear Perfect. once again. Now, um, I heard you just came from the city exploring Zagreb a little bit as you arrived here. How do you feel about the city? Uh, I'm very happy to be here. Uh, thanks for having me. Um, we feel very good after came, uh, coming from the group with the four points. Kind of surprising when we started off with a loss against Iceland, but you can see anything can happen. So uh, the sun is shining uh, today and we, we are enjoying Zagreb. And now you've come to stay until the final weekend of the 28th? I do hope so. We'll see. <laughs> It will be interesting. Um, in this Group A where you played, um, some would argue we've probably seen the highest standard of play. Would you attest to that? <sighs> From us, you mean? In general, the group? In general. Yeah, but okay, yeah, okay, yeah. Yeah, it, it looks good and it would be now interesting to, to see how the, how the teams will play in the next phase after some games are very tough and to see if play get tired and we've also seen a lot of changes in the teams so far, but um, I hope that it will be uh, getting even better. And just before the tournament, you were rested in your um, preparation games. Mm. Now that you've played, uh, we're into the tournament for a week. Um, how do you feel? How's your body handling um, the competition? Uh, good. I feel good. I uh, had some, uh, some uh, rehabilitation from the, from the knees and the shoulders and such. And uh, I started off a little bit later than, than other, others. So maybe I hope and uh, that will be a, a good start for me to, to get in shape. And I think... Uh, Uh, this far, I feel good. Um, your 16-man squad was announced relatively early compared mm -hmm. to some other teams. Do you feel like that was an advantage for um, the team really to come to grow together as a group? Uh, yes and no. I have seen a lot of teams having like 20, 20 guys in the in the preparations and uh, to have alternatives uh, is also good. But as you said, I think we as a group, uh, we knew exactly that uh, we are going to play together and then we can focus m maybe a little bit more on details than the other teams. I don't know. It's, uh, I don't, we will see in the end how, <laughs> what's the best uh, preparation. And your team has a mixture of experienced players and there are some who play their first main tournament here. Can you talk a little bit about these team dynamics, how that pans out, maybe also in the locker room? 
Yeah, we had uh, with Christian as a trainer. We changed a lot, trainer and uh, the team. Uh, some generation uh, went away, and uh, and the other guys who still was uh, playing like me. I was one of the young guns, uh, young guys before. <laughs> now we call ourselves young guns, um, and now I'm one one of those who are more experienced and has to take a bit more space and uh, and uh, try to try to have this mixture from young and relative young older players. Uh, I think it's good, and uh, we have a lot of players now who have their first uh, championship or the second one. So we we exp we learn a lot and uh, getting experienced, and I think it's uh, it's a good mixture to have both. We have uh, hungry players, and uh, we are also hungry the older ones. But we can we can learn a little bit from each other. But you're still a young gun, even if you're the older guy. Yeah, I think so. Here I'm I'm still young. <laughs> <laughs> what would you say characterizes this Sweden team that makes it so strong? Uh, that we that we play uh, this fast game that we just uh, moving forward. We're not uh, thinking so much of what happened. We're just thinking the the next next ball that uh, to go in the goal or that we have to save it. And I think it's characterized us that we we don't uh, we don't uh, stay so much in the past. We go just forward. What uh, do you make of the performance of goalkeepers uh, in the tournament so far in general? I haven't seen that much of the games, but what I'm seeing, it's uh, it's good. I think it will be even better now in the next stage when uh, maybe a lot of teams are a little bit nervous or not nervous, but pressure. And I think now when we advance to the next round, a lot of teams will feel that now it's just go and not so much thinking. It's just possibilities now. And uh, so I think also the goalkeepers will be uh, taking one one level higher. Now, Mikael, you say you haven't seen much. Um, I think that's a good keyword because we've come up with a with a roundup a little bit of some of the best goalkeeper saves. Mm -hmm. So why don't we take a look at these now? Jejum saved. Ah, huge gap though. Ekberg had gone off, gifted him a huge angle for the shot. Tussle between Dozovic and uh, Hefner. Oh, what a save! Dummies the first shot, looking for the wing. Well, it took a deflection, and again, Galia saves. Why are they trying to push it wide? The angle just isn't there, and the Galia checks. Good save and maybe a chance. Mijatovic goes long. Oh, what a save! What a save! That is incredible! Who needs a keeper? Long ball. Kashito plucks it out of the sky. Brilliant save. Avalo is in the area though. So too, Kashito getting in the way of the keeper. Guys, you know the drill. To vote for your best action, you respond with the corresponding emoji. Mikael, what are you? I'm an ice cream. You're the ice cream, that's right. Um, mm. Heine Feta, that would be the lollipop. If you go for Gallia, that's the popcorn. Grotzky safe, donut, and, oh, Thomas, donut. and Thomas Bauer are the <laughs> french fries. Okay, so you are going for the donut? Yeah, my friend Patrick Gretzky. Oh, uh, so okay, so you, so you like that one? Yeah, yeah, of course. And you see also that uh, um, a player on the field can make a save in that important. I like that uh, when you run back and uh, and have this motivation. Okay, this is good because that's a topic I want to talk about: the seven on six yeah. in attack. How do you feel about having to run back and forth so much now? You didn't have to uh, two years ago. Oh, I'm exhausted. I'm exhausted. You see, we play it a lot in the NEC 11 and I'm exhausted. That was, I have to make a pause before for national team. No. <laughs> no, it's good. I mean, it's kind of different. It's a new, new how do you say, a new tactical play that you have. And um, it's, it's making the game a little bit slower. Um, you have playing more, a little bit more tactical. But as a goalkeeper, you, you, you have to... I think you have to rearrange your training. You have to train some more sprints, and also it's a lot of tactical things that you have to to think about when you make a goal. You have to have someone before uh, they uh, play the ball, so we have to be alert on what that uh, they can make a fast goal if not the goalkeeper is in the goal. 
And for you, it's really not making the game any slower because you have to be on edge all the time watching and then running back, sprinting back. Yeah, that's true. Uh, also, I've seen um, some Gokis almost running into the goal, the post or the, the Prosper. And that's you have to <laughs> look out that you don't uh, only focus on the ball that's coming because then you <laughs> maybe will get hit from the goal. For you as a goalkeeper, the dynamics are interesting because you share the goalkeeper position um, with um, Andreas Palika, mm. who's also your colleague at Rhein-Neckar Löwen, so on your club team. Mm. Tell me, how is that working out? Is it a curse or a blessing to be seeing the same guy over and over? <laughs> Mostly a blessing. <laughs> Mostly. No. And uh, here we, we share the room in, uh, in Rhein-Neckar Löwen, but here we don't. So we get a little bit off time from each other. So that's good as well. No, it's, I think it's... Uh, it's it's a positive thing. I mean, we know each other so well, and uh, uh, we also play good, both, both of us. <laughs> That's the most important thing, that we play good together. And uh, so I only see it a positive way. Okay. Let's uh, look ahead. Two days away, mm -hmm. a match against France. Mm -hmm. A lot of people, before the preliminary round even, would deem France as a favorite to win the tournament in general. Do you feel like you're going into this one as the underdog? And if so, is that an advantage? Yeah, I do think so, that we are going into this, um, this game as an underdog. And uh, also last year in the World Championship, we played against France uh, before 28,000 uh, French in Lille. Then we were also the underdog and then we lost. So, but, uh, so I think that we should go in uh, with the underdog position, but in our heads uh, still be, be very c confident and uh, also uh, have the mindset that we are going to win this game. Uh, like we go into every game and not have too much respect for the French team. And uh, talking about your mindset now that um, you've showed very strong performances, are you starting to think about the past success that Sweden has had? And uh, does that add pressure onto you guys' shoulders? Mm, in success as uh, many years ago or the last year? Many years ago. Many years ago. Okay, no, I think, I think the past is the past. Uh, we have to look forward. We are not the same team as them. Uh, Still, we have uh, we are we are very proud of that, and we know that Sweden uh, that we can achieve uh, such success, and I hope in the future that we also will do it. So I see it. Uh, we we are our own team. It's a new team, and uh, we have the pressure that we make ourselves. And um, you talked about you certainly believe in yourselves now after having uh, earned maximum points from this preliminary round. What is the team's goal now going ahead? Uh, I have to say a boring answer, it's a game for game, <laughs> so now it's only friend, uh, for the France team uh, that they are in ahead, but of course we, we, are, we want to go further. Last time we went out in the quarterfinal uh, last year and I think that uh, me and all the guys in the team are wanting more. We want to go further and further and improve, mm -hmm. so uh, our next goal is to, uh, to take us uh, from this phase into the next one. But you know, your coach, he did say, he said, not only are we the favorite in this group, but also a main contestant for gold. That's a pretty strong statement. Pretty strong, yes. You have to, have, you have to aim high. <laughs> you have to aim high, and yet you're saying we just go game by game? Yeah, for us players, maybe they think, think further ahead, they're the leaders. <laughs> Okay, now um, we have, we're doing a little prediction game here mm -hmm. on the EHF Euro Live show. We have three contestants. One is always the guest, so that will be you, mm -hmm. the fans. Mm -hmm. And then the third contestant is Brian. In this game, we're predicting usually the winner, but today we're doing it a little different. And before I explain that, let's bring in our third contestant, Brian. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Mr. Ice Cream. Hello. Hello. <laughs> and what are you? All right. I'm a... I, I like the donut. The donut was good. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Should okay. I sit here? Oh, we, if, if you can always, we can all sit on the couch. Oh, I think oh, oh, we yeah. will, will manage. Yeah. 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 This is good now. Yeah. All right. Um, so we're predicting a game. Brian, do you know which one that is? Norway. Serbia. Serbia. Yes. <laughs> almost forgot no, the first one. No way, Serbia. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and um, for that one, so I'm asking both of you for your score. Mm -hmm. Okay. Wait. Rock paper paper scissors. <laughs> see who goes first. Okay. okay. All right. So, you, you want to go first? No, you can go, you can go first. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I think Norway will win with uh, 30 to 26, but I hope it's the other way around. But I think, yeah, I hope so. Okay. Really, but, uh, uh, yeah, okay. 30 to 26. I'll go Norway 30, Serbia 25. 30, 25. Okay. And um, our fan, that is 
Jovanko Ugrenovic. He also picked Norway to go through 32-26. So same score as you. Isn't that what you said? Yeah, uh, but 30. I meant 30. Two, oh, 30 to so, 26. So okay, 30, and this one is 26. 32. So, um, yeah, okay. so I didn't want to have the same. So, um, Jovanko, you will be representing the fans here with that score. And um, the one who has the gets the score right or the closest will take the point in this competition. And we are all square now because Brian's uh, pick yesterday was correct. So the score is, should be two apiece. Yes, thank you, Denmark, for that result. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so um, Brian, while you're here, how are the squad goals going? Going okay. Yeah, I mean, the score at the moment is two to one. Marcio's winning. I just decided I wanted to give him a little bit of a, a head start because the poor lad, he's never done this before. I've been here, I've done the squad goals before. So I give him a little bit of a lead and now I'll start taken a bit more seriously yeah okay so two one but we haven't seen any of the squat goals yet or besides your table tennis challenge so uh, let's take it away with uh, Marcio I believe here we go so how do you say it Moira Mojoro Moira Mojoro Mojoro So Brian, you're down. I'm down, but I'm not out. No way. You can follow us, of course, follow me on EHF underscore live and Marcia then on uh, EHF Euro Instagram stories. But there's only one person really to follow. <laughs> and that's Marcio. <laughs> well, we, will be, <laughs> we will be looking forward to more squat goals. Mikael, thanks for coming. Um, we don't ever let our guests leave without a present. Um, and you actually have a choice. We have Tor, the mascot, Ooh. or the cup. <coughs> so um, choose wisely. Yeah. Because the he's, he's the, nodding or oh, yeah. shaking. His head. <laughs> <laughs> nodding or his shaking. Head. Okay, he's nodding. Yeah, but I already had this one. Oh, I, you already I got have him. Yeah. Kay. So, so I take the cup. So you go for a cup. Yeah, I take it. Ah, I can drink my coffee. Perfect. Okay. Well, thank you. Um, thank you very much. Yeah, yeah, no, thank, thank you. you for coming. Thank you for sharing um, all your insights about the Swedish team. We wish you all the best of luck. And um, now you've seen, you've, well, obviously Brian is here, the one squad goal contestant. And um, Marcio, he was up to something a little bit different yesterday at the match from between Spain and Denmark. Let's see what he came up with. They are always following us, um, and it's incredible what they what they do to support us. Uh, as as uh, traveling all the way to Croatia, and yeah, actually all what they are doing is uh, is amazing. The best that we can to support the guys when they are out and about. We've been to Qatar, China, Brazil, you name it. We've been there. This she really means everywhere. No matter where we play, we have uh, a lot of a lot of people, a lot of spectators uh, coming from Denmark, and uh, yes, yeah, it's, it's amazing. It makes uh, handball spectacular when there's uh, a, a great atmosphere. But the truth is, I heard a story about two ladies, two special ladies. Of course, you, we recognize them because they are, as you say, always there. They, they come sometimes to the trainings and we talk to them after the games and uh, yeah, it's, it's a lot of fun. We want to support our team in the best possible way, so we dress up and uh, we cheer and we do our best, so hopefully they can win. And it seems their effort is rewarded at least once a year. And they, they recognize that we also have one annually meeting with the players where we get to socialize a little bit with them, take pictures, autographs, you know, the scenes. So. so it seems like, win it or lose it, the Danes will still have their faithful supporters. You traveled further than Brazil or China. Let us know below. We want to know how far you've traveled to follow your team. 
Now we are moving on to the main round. And um, I would like to give you an overview now that 24 matches of the preliminary round have been played. We have the group one for this first, uh, first group up here. So Sweden, they have taken four points into the main round as have France, Croatia and Norway two points, Belarus and Serbia into the main round but with zero points. Now, if we look ahead at the two matches for tonight, that is first of all Serbia against Norway at 6.15. The throw off for Croatia against Belarus is at 8.30. These two will be playing in Zagreb, so that arena that fits 15,000 fans maximum. They are moving up as they are coming from much smaller arenas. So um, in this one now, Serbia versus Norway. Sargosin and Co. are really the favored ones and Norway, they eye their second semi-final berth in a row. Their record, they scored over 30 uh, goals in all of their three games, so they are looking strong. However, Serbia, they have had to play without their injured player Marco Vujin and they've showed really how much quality they do have on the squad and they produced when it really mattered in their final group game versus Iceland. Now then, the other one, that is Croatia against Belarus. Croatia, they come to Zagreb looking to bounce back after their loss against Sweden. And um, while Belarus have no points in this group phase so far, the odds are kind of against them. Also because Croatia has won all three encounters against them. So then, it is time to reveal the emoji vote. And... Um, it looks like there's an overwhelming majority for Patrick Grötzky's save. That was the donut. Let's see it again. So our guest, Mikael, is happy that his teammate got the win here, although he was a contestant too, so fair play, man. Thank you. Thank you. And um, Grötzky already, we already picked him once. Um, here the second time a winner, yeah. Good job, you guys. Thanks for voting. I hope you enjoyed that one. We can be looking forward to more of the same. Also more of the same from our EHF 2018 live show presented by Lidl tomorrow at noon. Meanwhile, watch all the live action live on ehftv.com. Follow us on all our social media channels. That's it from me and from the show. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye bye.